In this video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose a lighting circuit on a BMW E46. So one of the subscribers asked me to make a video and help him diagnose his fog light system on an E46, which is not working. And this video should light the way. Please remember to like and subscribe. So I've already accessed my fog light plug and I have a test light in series. And this is going to light when we've solved the problem. I highly recommend purchasing a power probe. I'm gonna put a link in the description box for a great power probe that is not overly expensive. So with a power probe, you, you hook it up to power and ground and it will beep at you. Once I hook it up right. Okay, so now we have a display where I can check for power and I'm gonna just touch it here, 12.5, or I can check for ground. And you notice the tone is different. So I have a high pitched for power and a low tone for ground. You don't even have to be looking to know what you're checking. I know if I have power or ground just by the tone. So we're going to actually do a fun little test here. Here's my bulb. So what's great about a power probe, and this is going to really help us do full diagnostic testing, there's a ground attached right to it. So I can put a ground on one end and don't cross, don't cross the streams when you hit the button. I'm just going to go ahead and touch the other side. You see it's grounding through the circuit, but there's no power. And once I apply power, we have light. So this is a great way to test your bulb. Just in case this is a bulb issue, usually you can look inside the bulb and see some fuzzy in there. Sometimes they'll re-weld themselves and they don't look right. But first thing to do before you do anything, make sure you have a good bulb and you can easily do that with the test light. Again, one more time, and it doesn't matter on polarity, not when you're checking a straight bulb with just a two wire circuit, it does not matter. LED lights matter for polarity, but a regular halogen bulb, it does not matter. Our bulb is good. Things that we're gonna need to check are the fuse in the glove box. Glove box is removed, so if you need to see a video on removing the glove box, I'll put a link in the upper right corner. We're going to need to access the lamp module. The lamp module is right here. It's a long piece of plastic with a circuit board, so we will need to remove the wood trim to remove the lamp module. Let's take a look at our wiring diagram so we can understand what we're gonna be checking. So always the basics. Fuse 38 is a 10 amp fuse, and obviously we have to have a good wire here, which is powering a relay. You can see this switch right here is open. If we look on the other side, there's this picture right here. This is actually a magnetic coupling inside of the relay, which when activated, closes this contact and allows power to go through the circuit. And you can see that the fog lights have constant ground, so it's a switched power signal, right? Which this relay has to turn on to supply power. So we need good ground here. We need this relay to be able to turn on. So the activation is from A3, which is your light switch center control unit. That's that component that I showed you on the left side of the dash. That's basically your light switch. And you can see this says 15 and that's a switched power. So terminal 15 means that there's power on with the key on. When the fog light is pressed, this means that it's a processor. It turns it on, applies voltage to pin eight, which activates the relay because the relay has constant ground right here. Or if your lamp control module is not supplying power because maybe the button on the lamp control module is bad, or the module is bad. If you're not getting a power signal here, then the relay will never close and your fog lights will never turn on. So we're gonna go through all of these steps, but you always wanna start with the basics. And the basics is check the fuse first. All right, first stop is always the fuse panel. So the fog light on an E46 is powered off of fuse 38. Here's 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 is missing well that could be the cause right all right so let's go ahead and put a fuse in fuse 38 and what you should be checking for with your power probe is that you have power both sides of the fuse so i should have power here that's good and power here okay so that means this fuse is good and it did not open if you checked one side and it was good and you checked the other side and you had no signal or you had a ground 
signal, then this fuse could be open. Now it may seem silly to ohm out a fuse, but sometimes a fuse that looks good might not be good. So take your DVOM, set it to ohms, take your other ends with alligator clips or you can hold them to it and check your fuse. We can see that we have 0.4 ohms through this fuse. So that means this fuse is actually good and went down to 0.3. If you saw OL, that means that the fuse is actually open or if you saw a high resistance, I don't know if I can recreate that, yeah, like that, right? So I'm just lightly touching it or it's jumping all over, over the place you have an issue inside of that fuse and it should be replaced. Always a good idea. So we know our fuse is good. Let's put it in and check our fog lights. For the fog lights to work, the key has to be on so all your cluster lights are on and you have to have your switch either in the parking lights or full lights on. So we'll do parking lights. Press the button and at the same time, you're gonna get this green indicator in your instrument cluster. And that means that this is sending the signal that the fog lights are turned on. So I'm back probed into the connector for the fog light and my test light is not on. So I am not getting power here yet down to my fog lights. So the next step is realistically to check the relay. So if we go to the relay, there's a lot of things we can check. We can check that the power is getting here correctly to the relay. And then we could check to verify that there's power on this side, because if there was power leaving the relay from pin two, then we would know we potentially would have a ground issue or a wiring issue on this side right here. But if all of this checks out good, then we have to think about our activation side. So what's cool about the relay also is we could check for power here from the control module, which is a light switching center, and we can check the ground. Also, I can supply power if I back probe at pin eight and with the relay installed, it will or should turn on the relay with me powering it because this is a power side circuit and the relay should close and my fog light should turn on. Let's check it out. Let me show you the location of the fog light relay. So you will have to remove the glove box and this bottom panel, which just pulls out once the glove box is removed. So I will make sure to put a link up here in the, in the corner for you for removal of the glove box. So let's just close this for now so we can see better. The relay is up under here on this uh, module carrier. This is your body module. And then you have some relays up here. Oh, my relay is missing. Well, that could be why my fog lights don't work. It's this cool looking orange relay right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna remove this module carrier. So I removed that 10 millimeter from here. And then up here, right here, you can see that's all that's holding this on. So if I pull this forward, I can pop that free. And then there's one on the other side that I have to pop free also. All right, so I have this just pulled down, right? I took it off of there and there. So on the back side of the relay, there's a tab you can lift up with and then slide the relay casing back. And that's gonna give us access to checking the back of the pins and to power up the relay via back probing. So we're looking at this from the front. Six is the pin that should have power, but we can flip this to the back side up here, which should be easier and verify with our wire colors what pin is the right pin. And we can actually check for power and signal right back here. This is really the place to go if you have a crazy problem like this. Going to the relay holder is really where you want to go to figure out this problem because there's a great way to divide and conquer this. So the first thing to check is are we getting power from that fuse to the relay? And that is pin six and that is a red and yellow wire. So we just verify that is the correct one. We're going to take our power probe and it should beep for 12 volts. So that is good. We are getting power to our relay. So that means that this fuse is good here and it's good all the way to the relay right here. I really enjoy electrical diagnosis and this is actually a very simple circuit. So we checked, we have power here at pin six. This is good. So if I look at pin two and I'm at this relay holder, Hey, look, it goes through my bulb and then to ground, and then it goes this way through my bulb and then to ground. So if I had these bulbs out of the car and not plugged in, and I check for ground, which I should have on this pin right here at pin two, 
This is gonna be open, so don't make that mistake. You have to have good bulbs installed. It's a pass-through. Electricity passes through the element, which lights the element and then continues to ground. So let's check pin two at the relay holder. So pin two is this one right here. I have one and then two. My power probe should go green and beep at me. So I have good continuity to ground. So that means my circuit to ground and at least one bulb, at least one remember, because you have two separate paths, this is a parallel circuit, at least one path to ground is good. So at least one of these bulbs should be lighting. All right, now this is why you wanna have a power probe too. I can go to pin two and I can supply power or ground using a power probe. Down is ground, up is power. And they're protected inside, so even if I short it out accidentally, it will automatically reset for you. So I could take this now, and I can now check the other side of the relay to make sure that it lights my fog light bulb. Just by going to pin two and supplying power, like so. Now I need Zion to hold this for me, so I can press the button. Uh, I might have to get my wife instead. Zion, you got that for me? All right, so I'm gonna power that up. And you can see your fog light should light when you power up that pin two. So by powering up at pin two here, we just proved that this whole circuit is good. So that is not my problem. While it could still be a bad relay, we can still figure that out. So with the key on, like I have now, I should be getting power at pin eight of the relay and I should have ground at pin four. So let's check that out. So I should have ground at pin four, which is right here, which is good. And I should have power at pin eight from the module. Wait a second. There is no power from the module. That is probably my issue. Quick side note. Okay, so if you don't have power here, remember you could have a break in the wire. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bad component. So you would have to ohm out in that same ohmage setting from pin 28 to eight, 28 at the module and eight at the relay to make sure you don't have a break in the wire. You could also run your own separate wire to pin eight to overlay it. So you wanna check for a couple of things. You wanna check for a short to ground or a short to power. Now what's awesome is that all of these tests can be done with the relay installed. So if you flip this over, I can check for power. Good, I can check for ground. Good, I can check my voltage side and I can check my activation side. Now why do they show as ground? It's because it's grounding through the fog light circuit. Now this is my activation side right here. This was pin eight. That's where I should be getting voltage when this relay is turned on. So I can turn this relay on by supplying my own power to pin eight right here. So let's try that. And I can feel the relay click. Switch to the chest mount. Let's see how well this works here because now I can have both my hands free. We have to remove this wood trim to access the lamp module. And let's turn that switch off. So to remove this wood trim, you basically just have to gently pry up. You can see actually my wood trim has separated over here in the corner. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to gently pry up on the wood trim for it to release. And then once it's out, I can kind of just wiggle that last one out. There we go. Okay, so wood trim's out. You can see I lost one of these pegs right here, it's still attached to the wood trim right there. So there's a trick to reinstall these. Let me show you that too. So let's pry this off. All right, to install these guys right here, you simply take it and you put it in vertical. The other one's horizontal. You put it in vertical first and then take something like a screwdriver like this and you, you turn it to lock it like so. So that is now reinstalled and ready to go. Here's the lamp module. I have two Phillips head screws on top. So let's get those out. All right, with those two screws out, you just pull, the, pull and slide the lamp module out. There's a wiring connector on top. Just pull that out all the way. You can see right here, here's our connector. This is a press style also. You press it down and slide it forward to disconnect it. And lo and behold, I have a pin providing poor contact 
And that is the source of my problem. And yes, this is a bug I set up before I started. So this is simulating a break in my wire. So I should probably explain what, in, what ohming out a wire means. So we're basically checking the resistance between two ends of the circuit. Basically like the same thing, this is gonna complete the circuit and I'm now gonna have 0.2 ohms and I'm measuring the resistance of the circuit. If I had an open in the circuit, it would read OL or basically um, unlimited resistance. So I'm connected here with the alligator clip to the correct pin, which is pin 28 at the lamp module. We're checking all the way back to pin eight right here at the relay. So I have my test leads. I'm just connected in series. So that goes to that one leg over there. And then that, this black wire goes to my DVOM on one side. And then my red comes out and my red is still floating here. And now I need to go to my relay holder and I need to check pin eight, which is the lower one. And I should get continuity to ground if my circuit is good. And there we go. So I have 0.4 ohms. So that means that this circuit is has good resistance. It's time to go ahead and fix this. And I need my pick on each side of this connector. You just press out the lock tab on each side like so. And then both of these slide out. Okay, this is the pin that I removed right here, which was on pin 28, which is right here. So on this pin, there's a locking side with a little tab and just slide that back in. And this is all it takes for these pins to come in and out, which is great. Click, done, locked it back in. So to remove one of these pins, so you can see, has a little press tab. You just take a pick, gently press down. You can push up slightly. Actually the pin moved, grab the wire, give it a tug. Sometimes it will get stuck on the secondary spot right here. You just press and push that out too. And look at that, she's out. So now I can do my test right here without front probing. Front probing can make this area elongated. And if this is too elongated, you have poor contact. Sometimes that can be the problem with any electrical failure is that there's incorrect pin tension. So let's put this pin back in and let's rebuild this connector. So it goes brown, and blue, slide them in. Okay, so my connector is now corrected. It's basically like I fixed my wire or ran a new wire. And I'm going to plug my module in like so. And I'm just gonna push it into place like so. And I think my relay's back in. So in essence, we've now corrected the failure and go ahead and turn the lights on and press my fog light button. So here's my fog light and you can see I now have a working circuit. So here's our diagram again. We should have power at pin eight of the relay. And the relay should be activating because we know that our ground is good on this side. Let's check pin eight. So I actually now have you on my head with the GoPro, which is absolutely amazing. My, both my hands are free. Here's the relay. If we flip it over, we have a yellow and gray wire right here. And now we should have power on that pin when we didn't have it before. 11.6. So our circuit is now working correctly. So you can do all of your diagnosis really right here at this relay. That's what's so exciting about being able to break up the circuit this way. It's crazy, a lot of people are intimidated by electrical testing, but if you follow some simple steps and you understand how the basics of a circuit works, it's not that hard, especially when you have a power probe. I would highly recommend having a power probe to test where you can provide power and ground very easily and see what the live signal is just by the tone. I'm gonna to put a link in the description box for a great power probe. It's the KZ Power Probe, and that is my go-to one at home. And if you use the link, it does help me out through Amazon Associates. So thank you very much.